Hi, my name is Max Townsend from Townsend Audio and I am doing another video in our number of interesting videos on audio. This particular one is about cable and cable sound. Now there's been a lot of debate over the years as to whether there is or isn't a difference in cables. That's one debate. The other debate is what is the difference? What is happening? How can there be a difference? Now what we've done here is to devise an experiment that allows us to look at a cable under a very, very, very close microscope. And what we're doing is we're measuring the voltage between the amplifier ground and the speaker ground. If here's the cable, you've got the ground here, ground there, and we're measuring the voltage across the cable. On a perfect cable, that voltage should be zero. A real cable is going to have resistance and you're going to get a signal which is a, uh, a, a ratio of the signal across the output terminals and the resistance lost in the cable. If you get anything else other than a pure resistive loss, that's a cable artifact. And that's what we're looking for. And we think we've found it. We've made this device, which is our cable tester. And what it does is it compares two cables, uh, also with a short circuit and a resistor, equal to the resistance of the cable so that we can have a look very, very carefully at what's going on in the cable itself. So what we do is we have <coughs> the, the switch here, which is, in, it's got four positions. In this position, it's a short circuit where we've got an input signal here and an output signal there, which is going to the analyzer, the spectrum analyzer, which we'll be able to see. And we can select whether it's the short circuit whether it's the resistor equal to the resistance of the cable, or whether it's this cable, or whether it's this cable. And that's the four positions that we've got, one, two, three, four. Now here we have a external sound card, which is a very basic one. It's a 2i2 Focusrite, which has got a USB connector to the computer, and the computer has got REW, Room Equalizer Wizard software installed. And what we're doing is we're using the spectrum analyzer and the signal generator from the REW. And we are taking the signal via the USB cable, which goes to here, which is the output from the monitor output, which is the signal that goes to the monitor speakers usually, but there's enough power in that to go to this connector, which is selected with this switch to drive the cable on the input. And then at the output here we have the spectrum analyzer connected to this input here which shows us the spectrum of the voltage between the black terminal here and the black terminal there or there or the resistor or the short circuit. The cables we're having under test because we believe that the big difference is the characteristic impedance of the cable that's affecting the sound we need to explain how characteristic impedance can be working down at audio frequencies, even down to DC. We postulate an experiment where you have to imagine two wires going off to infinity. And these two wires have got zero resistance, but they obviously have capacitance and inductance. And we apply one volt and the capacitance tries to draw infinite current because that's the, the nature of the beast. But as soon as you run a current in a wire, you build a magnetic field. And the magnetic field slows the buildup of current. So you get a balance between the current that's charging the capacitance and the current that's building up the magnetic field in the inductance. Now this goes down the cable at about the speed of light. And it draws DC as you charge the capacitance and build the field. Now, if it draws 0.1 of an amp, that's the equivalent of a 10 ohm resistor by Ohm's law. So that means you could put a 10 ohm resistor anywhere between those two wires from the, the source to infinity and never know at the source. However, if you were then to cut the cable and open circuit it or short circuit it or have a different resistor, sooner or later you'd find out back at the source because something would come back to tell you that cable was no longer a 10 ohm resistor or a 10 ohm speaker cable. And by the way, that 10 ohms is the characteristic impedance of the cable, which is defined by the ratio of the inductance and capacitance. To get 
10 ohms, you have to have a very high capacitance and very low inductance. And that depends on the spacing of the wires. The further away the wires are, the lower is the capacitance. The closer the wires are, the higher the capacitance and the lower the inductance. So to get the low impedance, you need to have a high capacitance cable about 100 times higher than normal speaker cables. And the formula for the uh, impedance of the cable uh, is its classic formula, which is the square root of the inductance divided by the capacitance. So what we're doing here is we're going to measure two vastly different cables. We're going to measure a, about a, a 16 ohm cable with a 1,600 ohm cable. And what that comprises, if we come over here and have a look, here we have the classic isolder, which comprises two flat strips of copper with an insulating material on one of them, closely spaced, seven meters of cable coming to here. Okay, now that's the, uh, the low impedance cable. And then here we have two coils of copper, two, one here and one here, which are a single strand of this, this copper. They're identical conductors, but in this instance, they're extremely close together to give the very high capacitance, low inductance. And here, they're a long way apart to get the very low capacitance high and high inductance. And we're going to measure the voltage between the black terminal on both those cables and we're going to compare that with a short circuit and a resistor equal to the resistance of one leg of these cables. The cable looks like the 10 ohm resistor and we can move that resistor from the terminals to infinity and you're not and you won't know the difference but if you cut the cable you'll find out at the send end and what will happen is a reflection will come back to the send end to tell you that the cable is no longer 10 ohms and that electrical reflection will then hit the source and reflect back again to the short circuit open circuit or the wrong resistor and reflect backwards and forwards in the cable forever it will never die away but in reality, in a real cable, what will happen on a transient is you'll get a number of reflections which will slowly die away if you don't have a match between the source and the, the cable and the load, not the source. The source impedance doesn't matter. There can be anything as long as you match the cable to the load. Now, we've done some simulations, which we can show you here on this graph, of where we've compared a 400 ohm cable uh, with a uh, with an 8 ohm cable and you can see on the 4 ohm cable it's a step input and you can see that there's hundreds and hundreds of reflections on the high impedance cable and there's next to no reflections if any on the low impedance cable which ties theory into practice now what's happening in your audio cable for every transient in the music when you don't have the match between the cable and the speaker you'll get millions and millions of reflections. And what is happening in the cable is after every transient, there's just a whole chaos of reflections. It's a bit like a, an analogy as if you're in the open ocean and you've got waves going past which follow very nice wave action. But when they go into a harbour, which is enclosed, where there's an impedance mismatch, then you've got chaotic water that's all over the place. And that's what's happening in mismatched cables. What I'm going to do now... <coughs> is to show you the cable tester where we've done the measurements with the white noise going in to one end and what we use white noise because that comprises every frequency from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with equal amplitude and if the cable is correct you get the same amplitude right across if there's something wrong with the cable it will show up in this test now what we're going to do is to switch over here and we're looking at the uh, screen where you can see here you've got the slowly moving trace which is going from 20 to 20 kilohertz now that is set at the short circuit which is the same signal at this terminal and that terminal and this is our effectively our zero 
if we now go to that setting, that's a, a resistor, internal resistor, which is equal in resistance to these two cables. One being the two flat strips close together, the other one being the two flat, st flat strips separated. If we now go here, we're onto the two flat strips close together. And you can see that that trace <coughs> is virtually identical to the resistor. But if we now go to the widely spaced conductors, you can see suddenly we've got the rise in the high frequencies and that is not a frequency response rise, it's just the bundling up of millions of reflections which add an extra brightness to the sound. Uh, it's not a frequency response increase, so it may measure slightly, but it's significant and it is one of the reasons why cables sound the way they do. And it, the worst case of this is with these home cinemas where you've got multiple Dolby Atmos speakers in the ceiling and the signal is reflecting back and up and down the speaker cable, which they used to use. Main, they usually use mains cable, which has got an impedance of about 200 to 250 ohms, whereas you should basically have an 8 ohm cable to an 8 ohm speaker. This also explains why a lot of hi-fi systems sound bright, and this is the reason. Now you can see here once again. We'll show you on the trace there. You can see the Y's. I now go to the identical strips with a different geometry which is measuring flat i now go to a resistor which has got exactly the same characteristic as the two as the long cable and then i go to there's the short circuit <coughs> and you can see the drop in response due to the the uh the fact that it is a short circuit and there's zero loss we've tested a number of cables and we have here uh on a uh, uh the, the next slide where we can show you uh, a number of cables where the geometry is changed and the geometry is explained where we have either the two flat strips or a closely bundled cable or a closer zip cord or a wider space or a wider, wider, wider to fully separated. And they all have a different characteristic impedance and it's all related to the ratio of the capacitance to the inductance. So the higher the capacitance and lower the inductance, the lower is the square root of inductance divided by capacitance, and that is independent of length. It doesn't matter how long the cable is, that ratio is constant. The DC resistance changes with length, but the characteristic impedance doesn't. And the beauty of using impedance matched cables is you can have unequal lengths. It makes no difference to the sound. But if you have a terrible mismatch, you get a rise in the high frequencies. And you can see from this slide here, Here's a picture of a two meet, a three meter pair of three and a half meter pair of cables uh, versus a seven meter of the identical cable, and you can see that the longer the cable is, the rise, the greater is the rise in this high frequency resonance, and that is why manufacturers selling non-matched cables insist on having equal length cable. But the whole basis of communications worldwide is that the cable impedance matches the load impedance, or in the case of uh, a video signal where you have the um, source impedance is about 60 to 80 ohms and the load impedance is 20,000 ohms, like on an interconnect or a video link, we have what is called back matching, whereas the signal goes down from the source, there's a mismatch on the load and it reflects back, but because the source impedance at the uh, source end is very similar to the cable impedance, you don't get a reflection. And that is called back matching, which is very common in video and almost happens by default with your video cable, with your internet cables. Whereas the speaker cables, as you can see from the previous slide, vary in, in impedance from eight ohms right up to 1,500 ohms for the very widely spaced cables, which some people swear now all that matters, you, all you have to do is to drop the resistance. Yes, the resistance does matter, the lower the better for bass, but for clarity, you do not want that confusion of thousands and thousands, if not millions of echoes constantly in the cable when you have the mismatch. And about 99% of cables are mismatched. Right, we're now going to do a short music clip where we're going to compare the sound through a short circuit, the resistor, the impedance matched cable and the grossly mismatched cable.
So we're going to start from here. That's through the short circuit where you can hear very little sound. Now we're going through the resistor. And you hear. Now we're going through the solder cable, which is impedance matched. And that's the resistor. Impedance matched. Impedance mismatched. Matched. Resistor. Mismatched. 